Hello. I wanted to uh, share a cool picture that I got the other morning. I was uh, waking up, and uh, so I was just kind of coming out of, you know, that sleepy place that we go to at nighttime, and at least I go there. I try to go there every night. It's a good place to be, especially when God gives you cool dreams, which isn't as often as I would like, but I feel like uh, he's releasing more and more dreams, which is awesome. But I was waking up, and uh, I had this image stuck in my head. Like I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me right as I was waking up. And uh, I saw like these trees, like this field of trees, and I saw these people, or this person specifically, that was pinned up against this tree with these arrows. And the first thing that came to mind is in Ephesians where it talks about that, you know, our shield of faith and the fiery darts of the enemy, the fiery darts of the enemy, and uh, um, I was seeing that this person was pinned against this tree, and it was kind of really foggy and just hard to see and stuff. And they were looking up at this tree, and the tree was kind of dead looking, and there was no fruit there, and I could tell that they were just, you know, waiting for some sort of fruit from the tree. And I felt like God said, you know, this tree represents the things that um, this person is putting their faith in. And they're waiting for it to produce fruit, but it's never going to produce the fruit that they're longing for and they're looking for. It just produces enough to just barely, like, get you by and then you're just never satisfied, you know. And I could see all of these different trees with different people pinned to them by these fiery darts of the enemy and uh, that they were in the same situation. They were just like, you know, kind of discouraged and just oppressed and they were just looking to these trees to produce this fruit. I could kind of see like this wind come in and blow out the fog and then there was this tree that was right in the center of this orchard all of these trees were and it was beautiful and it had all of this fruit that was on it and I just knew as soon as I saw it that it was the tree of life and God's brought up the tree of life multiple times over the last few years so I'm going to try to keep it simplistic so I don't you know go into too many different directions but what I was seeing was uh, you know as people were acknowledging this tree I knew it represented Jesus and I knew it represented faith in Jesus and I saw that, you know, as these people were acknowledging Jesus and they were taking their eyes off of this tree, and I knew the tree that they were pinned to represented entertaining thoughts throughout the day of, oh man, if this would only work out, then I would be happy. Or if I only had this, then, you know, I would be content. And all of those things are just carrots that the enemy is using to distract us from receiving of what Jesus has done, you know. And so I saw kind of as the, this wind came in, which I knew to represent the Holy Spirit, kind of blew away the fog. People were positioned to get free from the trees that the enemy had pinned them against through them entertaining those thoughts that were, you know, causing them to be captive to those circumstances, that they were free to go to this tree of life. And God's revealed to me before, <clears throat> that uh, the tree of life represents the love of the Father, which is only, you know, possible of it achieving through our faith in Christ. And it was so cool because I saw all of these different, different type of fruits on this tree. And um, later that night, we got together and we were praying at one of my, my friend's houses. And I was just, you know, asking God during worship what he was doing to, you know, share with the people and kind of encourage them and stuff. And uh, I saw a cross in the middle of the room. And I saw just like a little splinter of the cross, but the whole cross was there. And I heard the Holy Spirit, basically he was saying, you know, there's so much available to you that the whole cross represents. Like what Jesus accomplished on the cross, there's so much available to you that you don't even realize. You're barely receiving a little splinter of what's av available to you through what Jesus has done on the cross when he died and rose again. And 
he was saying, I want you to ask the people here, and you know, I was asking myself as well, what are you believing Jesus for? Are you believing him for just enough to get by and just be saved and hopefully someday you're going to, you know, enter into heaven. But until then, like we're going to be totally getting beat up and battling our way through the mundane things in life. Or is he saying, are you believing me for more? There's so much more on the cross. Are you believing me for people getting healed, getting delivered, getting saved? Or are you believing me for even more? And the scripture was coming into my mind as he was showing me this. He was the scripture where Jesus says, you know, and greater things you will do because I go to be with my father. And it just inspired my faith because I felt like God was saying a lot of the times we're waiting on God and God's all, no, I'm waiting on your faith to receive what I've already done for you. It's not a matter of what I need to do for you as God. He's all, it's a matter of your faith being positioned to receive a greater amount of what Jesus has accomplished for you on the cross and what I gave you through my love for you through giving you my son as a sacrifice for your sin. And it was just a super encouraging picture. And I wanted to share just uh, the scripture in First Peter here. First uh, Peter 2, 23 and 24 says, uh, when he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. When he was abused and suffered, he made no threats of vengeance, but he trusted himself and everything to him who judges fairly. So Jesus was in a position to get totally abused by the world and by people because he wasn't standing up for himself. He was putting his faith in his father, trusting him to bring, you know, uh, justice. And it says he personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on altar and offered himself on it, as on an altar and offered himself on it, that we might die, cease to exist to sin and live to righteousness. By his own wounds, you have been healed. And I like that part where it says that we might die, cease to exist. And I think that's something that God you know, is highlighting so much in my life and just in what he's doing here at the tattoo shop is, you know, we're dying to our own needs and our own wants, which is all motivated by fear, or just lust of the world, as we're trusting in Jesus so that we might be alive to his righteousness to where like Christ, we're trusting God with us that we might be free to live for his glory and to love the people that are around us through that faith. And I just wanted to encourage, you know, the people that are listening that there's so much that's available to us on that tree, on that tree of life. And it reminds me of Revelation where it talks about, you know, the tree of life that brings healing and all these different things. And it's available to us now, you know. And as our eyes are lifted and the fog clears off of our circumstances and once again we're focusing on Christ, those things become more and more available and we find ourselves eating of what's available to us because of what Jesus has done for us. So I hope that was encouraging.